Today we'll dive into Solana and of course the big outage and what it means for the network. Is this a doom or an opportunity? We'll break it all down for you guys today. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. All right, let's get started here with Tangem as our sponsor. And Tangem is a great self-custody wallet. If you guys are looking at trying to do some self-custody, get your tokens off exchanges and get it into your own management, this is one of the tools uh, that you could use. And of course, Tangem, all you have to do is go to tangem.com and jump right into their uh, wallet. It's a card wallet and it's pretty, pretty slick. It has a great app functionality, swap inside the app, great security. And the cool thing is you can get your backups, all that, just go over, click that link right there, get Tangem and get the three card set that'll get you going. Use our link down below, it does help the channel out. All right, so a couple of points I wanna hit too, of course, the elephant in the room for everybody. And of course, everybody's hit me up on Twitter about this is that Solana went down. Everybody knew, knows that, right? Well, here it is right there on the major outage, four hours, 46 minutes, Solana was down on the main net. So this is a problem that has been plaguing Solana for quite some time. Now it hasn't been going on very recently when you compare, cause you know, we've looked at Solana for quite some time and it's one of the knocks that in the early days of Solana, I felt like was a holdback. Now here recently, there may be some reasons why, and I'll show what those are. Further into it, uh, this was a news story, recent uh, Solana outage took almost a day to resolve. This is the one that is kind of the, the measuring point. Let me kind of zoom in on that one. This one was the network suffered an, out suffered an outage that lasted 18 hours, 15 minutes. This was on February 25th in 2023. So about this period of time, that was the largest one we've seen. Anything over 24 hours, that's going to be a real problem. That would be a PR nightmare for, uh, for, well, it'd be pre our nightmare for anybody. Uh, this was kind of an interesting feature that was created by some of the devs, was a network restart, which was underway. This is, of course, linking all the nodes and giving you kind of a status bar of here's how the network is performing and how long it would be before we'd see it live. I thought that was kind of a, a cool feature. I haven't seen any other chain do that, so uh, that to me was a nice little feature. Now, some things to kind of expect here. This is AWS, if you guys know this, this is pretty much the, I would say the largest, you know, centralized servers in the world. This is of course, Amazon. And if you look at their downtime limits and a comparison here, not that that would be a real comparison, but there are expectations. In fact, around 53 minutes to up as, as far as 8.76 hours per year of allowable outage. So. Most cu customers don't like it when the event is strung together, meaning many hours. This was in the early hours here, Eastern time, um, late hours for almost everybody except Europe. Uh, so this is kind of expected from all kinds of servers, including these nodes that are out there. It doesn't mean that it's acceptable in the sense of how it needs to go forward. You look at outages here on Amazon, I was going through all the way back to even as early as 2009 for AWS. And you can kind of see, even today right here, they're still continuing to see uh, outages. And this is, as I said, this is the biggest company out there that's serving some of the most important databases and data uh, in the world. And we're still seeing that. It doesn't mean that's an excuse for Solana, it just means that these are kind of things that we do expect to happen now. Decentralization is supposed to solve most of this, but I also think it's just traffic congestion that we continue to see, and I'll, I'll showcase what I mean by that. A couple of points here. Right now, Solana, of course, has Solana Labs client, Jito is coming in as client, and then eventually FireDancer will be in there as client. So this will help solve on the validator side some of the issues that we will continue to see here. I think as, especially as the market continues to scale in terms of the network usability. And if you look at a couple of things here, here's DeFi, just on showing uh, total value lock continuing to climb here on Solana. So we know that's happening. Then you look here, this is the 30 day sales volume continuing to climb right here is a heavy amount of sales volume right now. And then you go over here and look at just the amount of weekly mints we've seen here on Metaplex, which is uh, really exploded uh, here on Solana as well. So all of this in comparison to other chains, no one's seen this kind of traffic flow. So that in itself is still a, a major issue. And remember, there's a lot of deep end projects, a lot of data projects, Render of course rides on Solana and along with many others. 
So there's going to continue to be quite a bit of, um, I think, you know, just pressure on the network. Here's the number of new addresses. Uh, this was a really kind of an all-time high here. If you look back all the way into 2021, this right here was the last bull run in 2021. And look at that. You know, we were still only seeing around 278,000 new addresses. Now we are seeing a total of 593,000. This was yesterday or early this month. So that in itself, another big issue. And then here is uh, total value locked again here on revenue. Revenue continues to climb, so that's a good thing. A couple of X posts I want to hit on. Solano may be down, but you can still play Honeyland. This is something that I think we're going to see more projects do, and that is insulating what they're doing on blockchain versus what they're doing within the app. And I think that is something that's a good thing, you know, in terms of development. And it's also, I think, just a good uh, process. Uh, Honeyland, of course, is one of the big games on Solana. But right now, Honeyland keeps delivering. It's playable from both browser as well as, uh, as you guys know, mobile. All right, so another thing that happened this week was GameShift, which is kind of a white label version of Shopify for game studios. So this is a big advancement. New things that are going to happen within this, of course, is just a lot more transactions, asset lending, et cetera, custodial, non-custodial wallets, et cetera, that will play into the future of where games. And this is going to draw in a lot of game devs, I think, uh, in making it just available. Another thing, of course, Solana Saga, now getting to 60,000 phone orders. That's a big deal. By the way, use our link down below. We're trying to get on that leaderboard. But if you haven't you know, got your chapter two yet, go ahead and you know, use our link down the, down below because there's going to be some pretty cool benefits, I think, for this phone. We ended up ordering one. We'll see how it goes. Other things that are happening, of course, this is Frank Mung over at uh, Helium. And if you think about the amount of assets that are starting to roll in, these are Solana-based assets that are starting to roll into Coinbase Mobile. Helium's mobile token has made its way onto Coinbase along with many others that are starting to make their way. And I think that's the key here is the roadmap going forward. So we're going to see a lot of that. And of course, if you look at Helium right here, the mobile subscriber NFTs, this is continuing to climb. Again, more transactions on Solana. And let's not forget right here is Hive Mapper. Hive Mapper, one of the biggest, I think, deep pins out there right now. When you look at the total amount of roads that are about there, because these are kilometers, 60 million global road kilometers. Right now, Hive Mapper has already mapped over 7.7 .7 million. I'm impressed with what Ariel has done in a short period of time. And they're doing a lot. Obviously, the U.S. and um, you know, Western Europe, Australia, uh, still the biggest markets, which is, is great because I think we're going to see this explode as well. Again, more transactions you know, on all this. And I think this is the thing. And of course, here's Render. Of course, you know, it's continuing to explode. Don't forget Render is also on the roadmap for Coinbase. And there's a lot happening around Render. I'm going to play a clip for you. But one thing to not forget here is that hopefully Fire Dancer gets in play before we see one of these deep ends, you know, really take a viral move or we see a major game take a viral move. This is, this is something that has to happen. So hopefully Fire Dancer is going to be able to get going. Listen, remember, these kinds of networks, all of networks of, of what's happening in, in um, blockchain right now are somewhat sensitive and a little bit vulnerable, I think, in general, because this is still early, early days for a lot of this technology. I want to jump over to a clip real quick to give you guys kind of an insight of where this might be going on a bigger scale. Listen in. What are you seeing in terms of the workloads right now that you're experiencing on the network? Are you experiencing more towards the rendering side or more towards the AI training side? Both. Every render job uh, has an AI component. We do denoising, we do upscaling, you know, anything related to generative AI and media it still requires rendering. 40% maybe do, you know, sort of neural jobs, neural compute jobs. 60% is still traditional ray tracing or generative, um, you know, stuff that you can run uh, in a normal render job. And then I think the other thing is Vision Pro, in particular, um, just rendering a one minute movie that is spatial video, like Apple spatial video format. As we started those jobs and the, you know, the amount of usage on the render network just for a few people that were doing that, it's, it's just a massive explosion. You're going from rendering 4K per frame to you know, hundreds, you know, something that's about 100 times that. And that's something that I knew was coming. I mean, obviously, I think you know, Apple entering this market is huge. So I think if you're going to be doing content for that, and I think everyone wants to, um, that's going to be another you know, driver of, um, 
you know, the kind of workloads, the amount of work that's being done per job on the render network. You know, we're going to see pretty much everybody that's ever used render look at using, you know, the system that we've created for spatial video, spatial content. And when you want to walk into a scene or create something interactive, which has not really been possible to the degree that I think it will be like a holodeck like experience on the Vision Pro is something that, you know, we'll have literally a holographic cube as a sample in the app that's launching Friday. Um, but that's an expensive render drop. People are going to want that. That's the future that even, you know, Sam Atman talks about like, oh, I, I want to build a holodeck. I want to see that happen. That's our vision as well. Um, and I think Apple's entry into this market is going to make that happened short of real holodecks being built. Um, so I do see that our, our sort of, you know, example and template of that, you know, really seeing a matter of days will open the door to others being able to then follow that. And there's been a lot of stuff we haven't been able to share prior to the Vision Pro being public. Um, but I think after that announcement and after our app is out and the content that comes with it, you'll see a lot more traction. I've been a little bit surprised that render, we haven't seen an explosion on render the asset just because of the connection to Vision Pro, but also remember, that this right here, Coinbase Assets, is now added rendered to the roadmap. So we're going to see this on Coinbase. The other thing is this is getting in, into the institutional side of Coinbase. So that, that clip we just gave you was from Coinbase Institutional as a podcast. Most of the people who listen to that are institutional companies. They're getting their first real taste and understanding of what Render's capacity is and what its place in blockchain and maybe the future of cloud compute is going to be. So there's a lot happening out there for sure. If you look at the charts right now, you can kind of see render here up slightly over this past few weeks. Let's take a look at that. And yeah, from this last little buzz right there, about 17%. I still think this is a good value. One that I like just in terms of, even though it has climbed quite a bit this year from the uh, origin of when we started talking about render. But this one again, I think is a good one uh, to keep an eye on. Let's take a look at Solana, see what's happening there. A little bit of correction here, obviously, after yesterday. And uh, not bad, I think, holding at $95. Uh, still a pretty decent uh, situation, I think, for an outage to actually occur. So we'll continue to watch what's happening within the ecosystem. As you guys know, we cover quite a bit of Solana news here, mainly because there's a lot of advancement in the tech that really makes it here on the show. All right, if you're not in the Diamond Circle, get in there. It's another great place uh, to really get information. And just as a reminder, one time uh, to think about, guys, is we don't really do much promotion on our Twitter accounts. If we do anything uh, about announcements or things like that, it's it's in the Diamond Circle, which is our email. It's where we're a little bit more connected to our audience. So all you have to do is click the link down below. You can get in on that. Catch me on X, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.